Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about how to debug memory leaks in your Seagull programs. So I'll start off with a simple example. As you can see on the left, I have my ID, which has a very simple for loop that prints a string using the Seagull method, uh, and it prints it out onto standard out. It uses a simple SQL program, which is basically takes in a string and prints it out on standard output. And then I call free to basically free the allocation that I've done for this particular string. Um, and everything is fine. So if we run this program, you can see my program start to run. And on the bottom, I have each stop. You can see it um, is consuming some memory um, in the in this column, the RES column, but there's um, nothing bad happening. It's uh, you know taking as much memory as it needs and you know giving it back to the to the system when when it's fine. So let's um, go to something more interesting. So let's say. Um, and I'll fire up H top again. Um, and let's say you forgot to free the memory that you had allocated. So I'll comment this out and uh, now let's try to see what happens. So again, my program is running. And if you notice this time around in the RES column, the memory is going up as the program runs. Um, you can also see that it's not actually getting reclaimed, um, and it just keeps going up and up and up, and eventually uh, the program will be terminated um, because it will run out of memory that it can use. So <clears throat> let's stop that for a while. Um, and let's say you are trying to debug and you notice that your memory is getting consumed at a very fast rate and you don't know what to do. So the first thing that you do is you add uh, pprof, um, which is a built-in Go standard library package that can help you um, debug memory leaks. Um, and Dave Cheney has uh, written a very helpful wrapper package around the Go standard uh, pprof package, which is very simple to use, a simple one-liner. Um, you can basically call it at the start of your main method. And it writes out a file, a pprof file, onto disk and handles everything for you in the background. So let's add that. And now let's try to run the program again. So this time it's running, as you can see, it's doing the same thing. The memory consumption is going up. You still don't know what's going on, what, what's going wrong, and you still haven't, let's assume you still haven't found out which function is at fault. So if you stop this now, um, you'll see that there's a memory profile written onto the disk. Um, and if you try to open that, um, you'll see what is going on um, in your program. And this is a very helpful high level view. Um, and let's say we select uh, look space. So it tells us uh, what's been allocated um, in the view. Quickly take a glance, you'll see the hierarchy. It's a very simple uh, program, so it's very easy to see what's going on. Uh, majority of the space is, uh, you know, taken up by the SPNF function, uh, which makes sense. But what doesn't make sense is the uh, the usage number. So as you can see, um, it's an order of kilobytes. But what we saw in our in our um, 
and Ram Vedesh Tapa was consuming a whole lot more than that. So you might be wondering why why is there a discrepancy? Um, and this actually goes back to the initial problem where um, we're not exactly using Go at this point. We're traversing ourselves into the Seagull territory. And when it comes to Seagull and its memory allocations, Go doesn't actually, the Go memory allocator doesn't actually account for all the Seagull um, memory allocations that happen um, by the, the by the program that you write. And this is actually documented in the um, Seago beginner tutorial, uh, if you may call it, uh, that the memory allocations by the C code are not known to the Go memory manager. So if you create a string like we did on line 29, um, which will do a malloc, you need to, you must remember um, to free it back once you're done with it. It, uh, you know, is missing in this program, and that's why there's a leak. So now you may think, how might you go about debugging something like this? So one quick trick that I found, um, that's an old trick from um, writing C, but it still works with Go programs, um, so you use Valgrind. So those, um, if you're not familiar with Valgrind, Valgrind basically helps you run your program. And, and at the end of the execution, it will, it can show you where potentially your program might have picked any memory. So for, to start off with, I'll, uh, I'll do some changes so that it becomes easy for us to, to, to see. Um, let's make the count of iterations slightly lower so that program terminates um, quickly. Um, and let's remove profiling because I'm not interested in that anymore. Um, and now let's run make Valgrind. I forgot to build that. Um, but you can still see um, Okay, let's try that again, because I, I, I ended up using the old version um, of, uh, of the binary. So, clean and build. Now we run Valgrind. Um, and now it's slightly easier to see the output. Um, it can tell you that there is a leak. Um, there's, there's definitely, you know, like I said, 70 bytes lost somewhere. Um, and it gives you a, a, a trace of potentially where the the leak might be. So as you can see by the by the traces that it has emitted, um, some of them you know point to Seago. Um, it's not exactly clear what's going on um, when you take a first glance at it, and then you notice. Um, there are some mallocs happening, but still, it's not really uh, not really clear as to you know where the leak might be. Uh, but at least one thing that is certain that um, they can sort of figure out where um, where that there there is a leak uh, here potentially, and it is happening in the seagull side of things and not in the um, go memory allocation side of things, which is, um, you know, slight progress um, compared to uh, what we knew before, where uh, we didn't know if the memory leak was uh, in the go program or the C go program, uh, which is usually the case when you have large running programs. In this simple example, it was easy to spot where the leak might have been, but it um, might not be easy when you have a when you have a very large program. So if we now bring this back, as uh, documentation says, and 
try to do another build and run Valgrind again. Um, you'll see everything is fine. It, uh, you know, has not seen any leaks that it thinks. Um, and, uh, yeah, your um, memory leak has been fixed. So this is one simple way to um, figure out leaks with your Go programs by running them through Valgrind if the normal pprof uh, profiler is not being helpful. That's it. Thank you.